Today, we're going to cover the captivating history of the heir of Charlemagne's empire, Louis the Pious. Sources used are listed in the description below. I'm Colloin History, and in this video, we're going to cover the civil wars that plagued Louis' reign, Louis' vision for the future of the empire, as well as how that vision turned out. Stay tuned! This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I often get questions regarding how I make my videos, and the main program I've been using since the start is Adobe After Effects, which is a beast of a program and will take dozens of hours to learn if you don't know where to start. Which is why the best way to learn and master After Effects is via course, with the best course that I know of being Adobe After Effects for Beginners by Will Bartlett. Bartlett's course will give you a solid foundation on how to make videos, as well as how to use several tools that I myself regularly use when I'm making my videos, like masks which I use to create political borders, and vignettes which I use to make black corners. Whether to learn how to use After Effects, fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is a perfect place to be learning and thriving. With a premium membership, you will get unlimited access so that you can join the classes and communities that are right for you. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month, and since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up to get a 2-month free trial via the link in the description below. In spring of 814 AD, a messenger arrived at the royal court at the villa of De La Fontaine, bearing grim news to King Louis of Aquitaine. The messenger informed him that his father Charlemagne, the legendary warrior king of Francia and emperor of Rome had passed away in the imperial palace in Aachen. Upon hearing this, the king of Aquitaine gathered his retinue and quickly hurried to Aachen to crown himself emperor to the shouts Vivat Imperator Ludovicius by the Francian noblemen. However, the so-called Roman Empire that Louis inherited was not the empire of Caesar and Augustus, but a tenuous feudal arrangement where old Frankish traditions dictated that the realm always shall be divided among the sons of the king when the monarch died. Beyond this was the empire suffering from disobedience, corruption and inefficiency. As a strong and pious man, Louis met these challenges head on, carrying with him a vision for the future of the Carolingian society. For Louis, the Francian monarch were no longer to be a king ruling over various tribes, but over a Christian community in which religion, society and politics all coalesced. Soon after taking his crown, the new emperor started crafting his vision into reality by clearing the royal palace of prostitutes and sending all of his unmarried sisters to monasteries. The cleansing of the royal palace was followed by intense reforms that later would be referred to as Ordinato Imperi, or Imperial Reform. The reforms tackled many issues, one of the most pressing being the question of royal succession. Like his father before him, Louis declared his three sons Lothar, Pepin and Louis the German as kings of their own domains, with his eldest son Lothar being assigned the title of co-emperor, with the plan that he one day would inherit the empire with his brothers as vassals. The arrangement initially seemed to work during its first decade, but under the Vasado Corporation, tensions were growing. When the autumn leaves fell from the trees in 818, the Empress and Queen of the Franks Irmingard lay on her deathbed, with the Emperor being pressured by tradition to take a new spouse. Louis was by this time 40 years old, and Francian tradition dictated that the ability to procreate was as an important part of being king as at a ruling, fighting and hunting. He was expected to take a new wife, and refusing to do so would more or less have meant opting out of rulership. He therefore married a Germanic lady called Judith of House Welf and in 823 she gave birth to a new prince whom Emperor Louis named Charles. Louis' three elder sons looked upon their new empress and half-brother with contempt and anxiety. 
a new heir threatened their own political interests as well as the succession within the empire, and seeing as this newly born prince was named after the revered King Charlemagne, there were no doubt that the emperor intended for him to be a ruler. This hatred among the three kings was further fueled by contempt and fear for Emperor Louis among parts of the Francian aristocracy. Louis' reforms and way of ruling were seen by many as tyrannical and too unforgiving. Louis was a hard ruler and even went so far as to punish several lords in southwestern Francia whom were from old and respected families after a series of shameful defeats against the forces of Al-Andalus by stripping them of their lands and titles. Upon having their lands taken from them, many of these lords joined the retunits of Louis' three elder sons and brought with them their ardent hatred for the emperor. As the years passed, the tensions finally boiled over. In spring of year 830, while being on a military campaign in Brittany, Emperor Louis was approached by a messenger bringing him news that the forces of the three kings had stormed the imperial palace in Aachen, seeking to free the emperor from the alleged evil influence of Queen Judith. However, by escaping through the royal hunting ground in the Ardennes, the queen and the young prince managed to avoid the wrath of Louis' elder sons, and with Louis supporters managing to sow discord among them, they soon found their plan ending in a fiasco and themselves at the mercy of the emperor. Louis, realizing that their sentiment among his vassals had gotten out of hand, wanted to keep it to a minimum and therefore pardoned his sons for the rebellion and limited severe punishments to some of the brothers' co-conspirators. The pardoning did not have the full effect he desired, and three years later in 833, Louis were again faced by a new coalition of his three elder sons, whom now had gathered the full strength of their military forces, and even managed to acquire the aid of the Pope. At the last scale, the forces of the Emperor and the rebels met, to negotiate in order to avoid assorting to bloodshed. The discussions between the royalists and the rebels dragged on, with the Pope working as a mediator between the two camps. Seeing that the Pope seemingly were supporting the three kings, there were a lot of unease among the nobles in Louis' camp, and as the negotiations went on, Emperor Louis' forces gradually started to desert him and moved over to join the rebel camp. In the end, the royalist forces were outnumbered, and not seeing any chance of either reconciliation or victory, Emperor Louis gave himself up, and was put into the custody of his eldest son Lothar, who now were the de facto ruler of Francia and the Emperor of Rome. Having deposed Louis, the brothers divided the land between each other. However, like it happened when storming the royal palace, the brothers once again came in conflict with each other. One of Louis the Pious' sons, Louis the German, regretted having betrayed his father and turned against his brothers, and soon after the alliance between the three brothers had shattered, Louis the Pious was reinstated as King of Francia and Emperor of Rome, less than 12 months after having been deposed. Terrified, Louis' sons Lothar and Pepin were now left to the mercy of the father whom they had rebelled against twice. One might initially think that Louis would have given out some severe punishments for treason, but due to the surprise of many, he instead forgave them and let them keep the kingdoms he earlier had granted them, but now under much more strict control. Reinstated, the by now old Emperor Louis ruled energetically and ruthlessly, bestowing key appointments on his supporters and punishing those who had betrayed him. When one of his elder sons, Pepin of Aquitaine, died in year 838, Louis ignored the claim of Pepin's heirs and granted the kingdom of Aquitaine to his youngest son, Charles. As the 830s came to an end, Emperor Louis the Pious had rebuilt his political network, and his remaining sons didn't dare to do much to oppose him. There were one more minor rebellion carried out by Louis the German in response to the instating of Prince Charles as the King of Aquitaine, but due to not getting any support from his brother Lothar, the rebellion was crushed, with Louis the German's domains being reduced to only encompass Bavaria, which he was forbidden to leave on the threat of invasion. 
seeing no chance or reason to further oppose their father, the remaining of Louis' elder sons remained in their own kingdoms and gradually built up their own power bases to the point that they more or less had become independent rulers. As long as Louis was alive, the empire remained intact. However, in year 840, the old emperor finally died at the age of 62, and with each of his sons having established themselves as rulers of their own domains, a new civil war broke out that lasted for three years and was settled by the Treaty of Verdun in year 843, officially ending the Carolingian Empire as it was divided into La Feringia, West Francia and East Francia, the two latter becoming the political foundations of France and Germany. Today I hope you learned something new about Louis the Pious and the Carolingian Empire, and don't forget that if you like this video and want to see more videos like it, hit the like, share and subscribe buttons.